you know, stand and watch on the bridge. You got to be quiet. Don't annoy the captain. You're, you're going to get yelled at. Do your bridge. And that just, still applies today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so I don't know if you remember this or not, but I remember when you were going, when you were considering these uh, different paths to go down, you reached out to me, and I, I remember I was all proud of that that you, that you <laughs> looked up your I, dad's. I friend. felt bad for telling you, Tim. <laughs> no, I can't no, 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 no. It was fun. Um, for those that that haven't heard me say this before, the two paths that you choose are both rewarding, and it really goes down to the individual and, and what you want to do. However, in a more much broader sense, if you go down the debt path, it's a very, I think that the term is a vertical market. So in other words, you have one thing you can do and that's about it. That's like run a boat and nothing else. Whereas the people that come out of maritime school with, mer with uh, degrees in, mer in engineering, mm. many of them never even go to sea. Um, uh, yeah. a, a lot of my friends that went to Maine Maritime, they never went to sea. In fact, I remember, um, I think three of them went right off to, you know, B&M Baked Beans? Yeah. There's a big steam oh, really? plant in there. Three of them all went off to work at B&M Baked Beans. Uh, like six of my friends, they all work for EB. Well, and, and, and my friend Lance, who uh, who you guys might have seen in other videos, he and I grew up together on Mohegan. He went as a nuclear engineer, mm -hmm. never once stepped foot on a boat other than he was building submarines and aircraft carriers. Yeah, and that sort that of was, stuff that's there. what was great about uh, Mass, too, was they have all those other majors a lot of them we joke about because they're not sure you know the, um they don't go to sea but you know i did a minor in facilities sure. and i got my mass state boilers license nice. i Beautiful. you know i was uh training to do um wastewater treatment plants which i was yeah. very interested See, all in that stuff. And, and, and these are all choices that someone like yeah. you has in the future there are options and and, and uh um yeah. where where it, had you graduated with the third mates unlimited um <laughs> the only thing you could do is go for your second, yeah, then your seat. chief, and then go be a captain. And that's that, that's a very tight spot. You don't have a lot of room to and step out of bounds there. Where you, you have a whole, uh, going as an engineer, you have many options. And it doesn't just have to be on boats. Yeah. But I see a lot of the time with the, the deck personnel, they go out. One of my good friends, he didn't like that big boat life. Right, right, right. And he, he works on the ferry sure, in New York. Sure. You know? and, um, the other company that I used to work at, we used to have a guy that used to... Load all the barges, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't liquid. It was uh, dry cargo, you know, uh, uh, scrap metal and sugar and salt and that sort of stuff. Well, anyway, he uh, he he had gone and got he had gone the deck route, got his big license, came to work on tugboats, and got deathly seasick every time they started an engine. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was seasick all the time, so he couldn't do it. So he got off and was a shore based tank, uh, yeah. not tank, but bargeman. But, yeah. but anyway, so, so so you did this, you got out of school, mm -hmm. and then uh, I think if I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but you went to work for MSC, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, Military Seal of Command. Uh, and, and I said this in the other video too, not to be confused with MSC that you see on the sides of containers, yes, no, that's same Mediterranean thing. Shipping Company, so there's two very different companies. Yes. Well, and, and, and so when you do that, that's not a hitch like we have. You have to sign on for like eight or nine months, right? I was hired through school, yep. and uh, it was like agreed upon that I would, you know, go with them when I graduated. Yep. So uh, two weeks after graduation, I think, I uh, flew myself down to Virginia, did uh, that orientation that they have, some training, and then I was flown to Japan. Oh, and wow. I started my hitch there. Uh, I was in the Middle East primarily. We went down to Africa. We went to Djibouti. Can, can you just explain what 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 was the MSC ship doing? It wasn't calling on ports. Yes. Like so this was a uh, AKE. This was an ammunition dry cargo ship. So uh, weapons, mail, fuel, uh, am, food. Am I correct? And I think I've heard that people call this the Walmart of the sea. That, that, that you guys have Probably. everything, right? I, I heard it that somewhere else. It is everything. Else. So yeah. our primary job was to come in and out of port with their goods and bring it out to them so they never have to dock. Uh, so them being the... the, the, the United the, States Navy ship, which is a government ship crewed by uh, civilian mariners. 
and um, the, Navy, the Navy sticks right. out the seat. So, yeah. so, so in other words, our Navy has the capability of being ready anywhere in the world because we have the boats that are pre-positioned with the supplies yes. they need everywhere, and you're, yes. you're the people that come up. And you did the underway replenishment, right? Underway replenishment and vertical uh, replenishment, so we had fuel helos and oh, you so know, cool. test the fuel fuel samples. Uh, my main job on there was, this, so my first job out of school was a water third, so I was in charge of everything water, making the water, treating the water, um, testing the water. It now, I, I, to everything. fight off some comments that I'm sure are going to come, yeah. come in my comment section, you, I'm thinking that you guys did not make water through reverse osmosis. But we did. Pretty, oh, you did. You we did. had it our own machine and we had two EVAPs. Okay, and, yep. and, and, and now, I'm not an engineer, but I, I've read about this. You tell mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. But when they get seawater mm -hmm. and they run it through the heat of the engine, or, or I mean, they use engine heat to heat it, isn't that correct? And, for, then, and then they pull a vacuum. Not for the RO. No, 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 okay, no, no, for, yeah, for the EVAP. EVAP right, yes. right. And yep. So, um, so, so they're almost using some of the waste heat from the engine. Oh, absolutely, and the vacuum that it pulls from <coughs> the waste heat. So, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, that <coughs> cold seawater gets preheated by the HT from your uh, cooling that comes from the main engines and the generators. Once <coughs> it's preheated, a portion of that goes overboard, and using yep. you know in, in something sure. inductive to yep. like pull it out of the system, sure. creating a vacuum, and a little bit goes back into the system. And under that vacuum, water can boil. At a lower temperature, right. so we're talking good. about 180, 190. It can flash evaporate, comes yeah. back up to the top, and then since it goes back up to the top of the machine, it actually condenses with that cold water that's coming in. That was, you know, it's about sure. to do that cycle again. So nice. it's um such a cool process. It's so all you know what to ask me in the comments. Oh, I I, <laughs> I love it. I think it's really cool. These small boats don't have that. We load water. Um, but it was a really cool experience. There was a did, lot to it. Did you have to do other stuff um, other than just the water? Did you have to do any of the wastewater or anything like that? Or uh, just... I did a little bit of MSD stuff. I stepped in there. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we did, we, we all had to jump in uh, where it counted. I was put in charge of damage control locker number two. Oh, wow. Which was kind of a big job, especially as a, you know, t at the time, 21-year-old female with, uh, you know, a big, big crew. There's three damage control lockers. Um, I'm in the middle, so I, we were in charge of the house. And, damage and, and, and control. So, so this is fire yes. and leaking. Yeah, this is fire. Uh, yeah. You, you take t a, a yeah. magazine blows up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so damage control f one in the bow was all cargo. Yep, yep. We were the house. Yep. So if like a... Oh, and then the, the last one was the And the last room? one was the engine room. Got it. And then we would always assist. Okay, so if cool. there was an engine room, we would be the backup team. Sure. If there was a cargo, we would oh, be the backup cool. team. So we ended up going out a lot more because we were the closest to each locker. Nice. But uh, it was a nerve-wracking experience because I'm working with mostly Haas Pipers and sure. in, in this situation. And remember, Haas Pipers are people like me that didn't go to a maritime school but started at the bottom and yeah. worked their way up. Yeah. And so it's it, what, what, what she's she's nicely saying that <laughs> it's very common in our industry that some of us who have been working for years might have a chip on our shoulder or a little bit of resentment at a 21 year old female female that yeah. came out of school and is going to have to be your boss now and that's obviously not your fault but no. that's more of a it fighting the insecurities of the mariner themselves right so, but, and, and, but unfortunately it is very common I put trust in them yep. and I you know I. I can take their lead and yep. you know we rely on each other like, <laughs> and, and I enforce that these guys do this all the time and I just want to make them better. I, I'm, I'm always reminded of the Vietnam movies where the young lieutenant who doesn't listen to the, the old sergeant yeah. <laughs> and then is done with it. Yeah. His, his scene in the movie is over very quickly. Oh, yeah. He doesn't listen to it. Oh, absolutely. So, so after you did, you did what? Eight or nine months there? Nine. Yep. Nine yeah. months there without a break, right? Without a break. Yeah. Uh, this was the height of COVID. Very scary time. <laughs> we were stuck on the vessel. Could not leave. So yep. gangway up orders, which was unfortunate because they would let Navy personnel on oh. and contractors, but. Gosh through the COVID onto our vessel. Oh, did, we, we, did, the, did the COVID We got it up? really bad. Really? Yes. Wow. That's amazing. Were you able to dodge that one, or did you get it no, through? No. Well, apparently I got it, but I didn't get it. 
I never saw the document that said I was positive. But they put me in a hotel in Dubai for two weeks, which was uh, wow. kind of cool. That wow. was a break. Uh, my something on my bucket break. list to do. Yeah. <laughs> Not with COVID. But. Two bathrooms. <laughs> like, what? Um, so, so, so after you did that, you came home and probably were happy for a while to see the family. And oh, I needed, I needed to get out of there. Oh, I, was, I can't imagine. I, just, I was. The longest I've ever done was was uh, ninety eight days. And, yeah. And, and that was during COVID as well. I couldn't imagine doing doing nine months. Now, now, MSC is uh, known to have Mariners overdue. I was three months overdue with five different relief names. And when yeah. someone tells you your relief's coming. Yeah. And especially after being deployed oh, for so long, you and you get excited on going home, and, then, and then they let you down five different oh, times. Man. It's it's heartbreaking, uh, and it, it, it ruined four. my last three months. Sure, so sure. when I got out of there, I was ready to go. <laughs> so I got home, you know, a little little angry about the situation, sure. thinking I'm going to mull this over. Every four months, you get a month off. So I was expecting probably two months I, I'm going to get off, and... Uh, they gave me one, and I got mad, and I resigned. There you go. So, you okay, know. well, and, and, and I don't think, I think that it, it seems that MSC is, has a rich, long history of people yeah, yeah. getting out of school, going there, and then leaving. Oh, <laughs> a lot of people go there, they make bank, and they'll stay on board for a few years, right. a couple years. And they move up the ladder. They, they can do that, they right. move up the ladder, right. they upgrade their license. Right. You know, MSC's got um, programs where they can help you, send you to school, yeah. pay for it, yeah. and, you know, get get everything you need, which is which is great. Um, now, now, now well, I'm just cutting you off because we're going to talk uh -huh. here for all, all, all day yeah, long, you know. <laughs> so, uh... The, after that, you went to school, uh, you went to work the next job in the Gulf of Mexico, right? So I was on a offshore supply vessel. Ah. Yes. Uh, it was an offshore supply vessel that didn't do offshore supply vessel work. So, so in other words, when you say offshore supply vessel, I'm thinking of a big 190, 250-foot mm -hmm. uh, boat that has dynamic positioning, yes. so it can hold position, and it has drill pipe. And yep. carries mud, 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 and mud is for oil. drilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, okay. it displaces right. the oil, right. and they can pump the oil back yeah. up. But this specific vessel uh, was kind of retrofitted to work with the Navy. It was, oh, well, yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. And it, uh, you know, would take Navy SEALs on board, and they really? do training like how to get through dogged doors. You know, yeah, enter sure. space, small spaces, hot spaces, uh, move around engine room spaces, deck plates, all that. So, um, I wasn't there for, to me. for yeah. that though. Uh, I was there to transit the vessel from San Diego through the Panama Canal and up to Norfolk. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, that's cool. So, it, so it, you it was a month trip that turned into two months. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of things went wrong. An amazing crew, though. I had a fantastic time. Uh, so. Well, I know that after that, you ended up over here. Yes. And uh, you and I had, had talked for many years about getting you over here, oh, and you're here. But I'm just kind of curious if you could talk a little bit towards what it's like, how... Um, you've had two jobs, n neither on tugs. This is the first week that you've been on tugs, and so maybe you can put <laughs> yeah. that in there. But uh, um, how you perceive uh, a, a woman entering what's been traditionally a male-dominated yes. uh, industry has has it has it been difficult? Has it, are, have people been inviting? Have, has it been a claw, tooth, and nail? Or? It's both, really? and uh, I don't want to you know sound too. You know, feminist here, but uh, for you know how much a man works, it feels like we have to work just a, a little bit more to almost really? sh show ourselves. Really? Okay, well, it, it's, uh, well, maybe that's why you've done so well here. Yeah, <laughs> well, I know Tim. So. Um, it, it's it's tough, uh, especially in the engineering field. I've been told I don't belong here. I've been told get, you know, your hands are too dirty. Step aside. <laughs> it, it's it's tough. Um, I. I've been assigned, everyone's been assigned cool jobs, and I've been assigned cleaning, even though we're all, you know, <laughs> equal. It's, uh, but it's so, it's the most rewarding thing when, when you're able to fix something or, you know, I'm make something new again. I'm kind of leading you with this, because I hope that I know the answer mm -hmm. here, but um, as hard as it is, I've witnessed your work ethic here for a week with us, and I would assume that, that, 
as happened on here, that in other places you were very, it was, it wasn't so hard for you to win over some people showing that you aren't the girly girl mm. that isn't afraid to get dirty and get there and do the real work. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, good. good. Yeah, you have, good. you have to get your hands dirty. If you want to be in this field, you know, you can't. But, but I mean, you have, have been able to been able to make progress with the people that didn't weren't initially accepting, oh, right? Oh, sure, yes. And that's how I won over that fire locker. Good, good, you know, good, good. I got to be in the game with them. Yeah, good, and, good, uh, good. And, and that now you've been with us for a week, and uh, I had no reservations about having uh, any woman on board with us just because we have a good crew and they're polite, but uh, <laughs> this is your chance. Have you had any problems? Has, has it been difficult being um, on a boat with four other guys? Is that a, Has everything been cool I, with you? Uh, my previous vessel, it was all guys, yeah. but the, the difference yeah. was there was 20... Uh, guys instead of, you know, four yeah. or five. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I grew up with, you know, older male men. I, I grew up with the boys. And it's, it's the same situation. It, and um, I think it's more uncomfortable for them than it is for me, actually. <laughs> it, that's, 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 a wonderful that's the name of the game. So uh, I enjoy, I absolutely love it. Uh, it's, it's, a smaller vessel, which I'm getting used to, you know, not a lot of privacy, right, right, which is fine, right, you know, right. uh, it's you know, making them uncomfortable, I'm right. fine, sure. uh, but again, that's for, that's different for every woman. Well, and you and I've talked too, that it's, it's that you're in a position right now, she's technically considered an eval, mm -hmm. so that means she's being evaluated right now, and uh, when you have your own boat, and it, like, your clothes are staying on the boat, and, mm -hmm. and it's a part of you, and you can take ownership of it. Oh, absolutely! I think you'll be able to have much more breathing room then. But uh, oh, yeah, absolutely! Good deal, good deal. So, so uh, Hope has um, she's probably we're going to get off tomorrow, but um, Hope is going to stay on with the other crew, and um, I can't imagine they won't have anything but wonderful things to say about you. You've been Thanks. a joy to have on board, and. Uh, I look forward to following your career, and maybe we'll work together again someday. That would be amazing. <laughs> I so, 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 one last question before we go: If for some reason the running joke with my channel is that after my divorce I made a YouTube channel so I could meet chicks, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ninety-nine point nine percent of my audience are dudes, <laughs> I'm not. I'm the point one percent. So, so, so in the unlikely event that some young woman or maybe somebody's daughter is watching mm -hmm. this and has an interest in the maritime field. Do you have any words of encouragement? Do you, is this something that you would do over again? Yes. The, the industry's coming around. It's still male-dominated, um, but there are uh, you know, programs and policies in place that protect us. And, you know, feel confident. If, if you like to get your hands dirty, this is the perfect industry to do that in. You know, I mean, don't, don't be afraid. You, just, you know, just because you got lady parts doesn't mean you can't do a man's job. Oh, so, that's great. Uh, I love it. You know, don't tell, you know, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because you can do it. Well, hope you, thank you so much. Like I said, it was a joy having you on yeah, for a absolutely. week. I wish you were on for two weeks with us, but so it's better that you train with multiple crews anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, for the rest of you guys, thank you so much for watching. This is just a little bonus extra video, and uh, I thought some of you might think it's interesting. I think Hopi's interesting. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I'm always pushing this because I'm still trying to get it off the ground. If you haven't seen my other channel, SV Paquita, I'll put a link in the description. If you want to uh, support the channel other than liking, subscribing, commenting, you can cut out, head over to the patreon.com and be part of our Patreon crew. Patrons are people who pay about two dollars to five dollars a month, and uh, they keep the channel alive and going. So, if that's something you want to do. Uh, we'd love to see you over there. I'll put a link in the description for that as well, too. Thank you so much. Be safe. Stay healthy. And as always, see you on the water.